How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now, if you've looked at ground mount racking, especially ones that can fit 400 watt panels, you know it can be pretty pricey. I think I found a bargain, one that's pretty much the cheapest on the market, and I wanted to walk you through the full installation, and at the end, let you know, is this gonna fit your needs, or is it something you should avoid? So let's jump into it. So I'm going with the larger, eco-worthy ground mount setup. Now this is actually just two of their smaller units, and you'll see links in the description for the small unit and this large unit. The large unit will get you five 400 watt panels. If you just do the smaller one, it only gets you two. So you actually need the larger one because two and a half 400 watt panels isn't really what I'm going with. And then it comes in multiple different boxes. And I saw it coming from FedEx opposed to Amazon delivery. And unfortunately, Eagle where these boxes really don't stand up to delivery. So multiple of these were broken and parts were just loosely placed on my driveway. All the parts were included, but this is inevitably gonna lead to missing parts if those boxes keep breaking. Now, once you get everything, uh, a lot of the hardware is going to be associated to the, uh, securing the solar panels to the Unistrat. So you just separate everything out and start to put together your base plates and your shorter and longer legs. Now, this unit that I'm assembling right here would be one of those smaller units. So it only would fit two and a half 400 watt panels, and you'll need to bring two of those together to get to the five 400 watt panels. Overall, assembly is very straightforward and honestly pretty fast. Now, once you start putting together the actual rails, they're the thinner unistrut. There'll be three separate sections and then two splice kits per, two for the top, two for the bottom. What I do recommend is you place those on a flat surface like this concrete floor. And then when you start to tighten those together, you know that everything is straight and you don't have it tightened together where you're gonna have to make small adjustments later on once you start getting everything laid out. Now I'm going out and actually marking where I want these panels and summer sun casts quite the shadow on this side of my home. So I'm just marking at nine o'clock in the morning where that shadow's at. And I want full sun on these panels where I place the ground mounts by 10 o'clock. So that's that second corner, orange corner you see there. Now using the legs and the length of a 400 watt panel, I'm kind of laying out how far from the house does this need to be so I can set my string line and get a nice straight line that I need to cut out because I want to remove all of this sod. Now I'll manually cut the outside line to try to keep it as straight as possible, but I do need to call on the reinforcements to remove this much sod in the summer by myself. If you had to do this by hand, it would be a bear. Now I'm just gonna put down pine straw once I get everything set to kind of get my landscaping looking good again. You could do mulch, but if you have bifacial panels, remember white rock might give you a little bit more reflection on the backside of that panel. Now once I get it all cleared off, let's go ahead and finish this first unit, this ground mount, by placing the two rails, the top and bottom, and I have my legs set up to the lowest angle. This is about 28 0.5 degree angle. If I move that back laying up, I could increase my angle depending on what you're looking for for your area. And then I'll just go ahead and balance out the positioning here, making sure everything is good. And then you do have one more leg in the middle for a little bit more st stability to make it rock solid. Here's the finished product. And this will be one of four total units I'll be putting on the side of my home to accommodate 10 400 watt panels. So now I'm ready to actually start positioning these ground mounts and it's going to take a bit of work. I do have my string line back here, but it is now a level line, not just a reference in terms of the front side. I'm going to take these front posts right up to that string line. Also, I confirmed in the morning by setting this first panel that my shade is not going to cast on my first panel. So we're good there. And I should actually be getting sun about 9 a.m. in this location during summer months and probably about the same in winter months. So you want to go along your level line and kind of get a reference dimension. Here it's about eight inches. I keep moving down. We're about nine and a half. Here's a little hole here. That's, that's gonna be 10 and a half. And what you want to see is kind of where you're going to need to remove material and where you're going to need to add material. I'm going to be using what is a paver base to kind of build up just a small layer, tamp that down, and then I'm using concrete blocks from Lowe's. And you'll see all the links in the descriptions for the different materials we're using, so you can use that on your own project. 
I did confirm I can actually drill through these and you'll see what I'm doing to actually anchor each one of these legs. This is a semi-permanent situation. Each one of those blocks is 33 pounds, so it will give me a nice amount of weight, but depending on your area, you might actually need to anchor those in a little bit more. And we'll also talk about grounding later on. But I'm gonna start to get to work because I got this rack. And remember, this one could only hold two 400 watt panels, but two of these together can go five panels. That's two kilowatts worth of power. And then I'm gonna have another two on the end. So I'll start leveling things up. I'm gonna start with the first block here up front, make sure it's positioned correctly to my front string line. And then I will take a four foot bubble level from this block that is leveled up, reference that for the back block. And then I can start working my others with this now being my level surface and basically my reference point for the rest of these ground mounts. So everything is nice and level and securely in place. Now this is gonna be the most labor intensive part of the project and you have to really level out each one of those. I'm referencing that first block, but also referencing my string line and then getting the distances between to make sure it lines up with each one of the legs. This is for the first rack here and then I'm referencing across for the second rack and even using a board to extend out my references between the two to make sure they're level all the way across. Now, if you had a concrete pad, that'd be even better to secure to. This is a semi-permanent install for me as I continue to test and probably eventually use a different ground mount in the future at this location. So everything is pretty much set. I got some fine tuning to do as I secure the rack to the actual concrete blocks, which is the next step. Now, if you guys think, man, this looks like a ton of work, you're right. It is a lot of work. This is going to be about two kilowatts of a total four kilowatt ground mount on the side of my home. Now for my last home years ago to offset my monthly power bill, I went to the link in the description or you can just scan this QR code if you're on your TV and quickly get an understanding of how large of a system do you need and roughly how much would that cost after the federal tax credit to get it professionally installed. Now don't forget that federal tax credit is going away. So if it's something you're interested in, you might wanna look sooner rather than later or you might miss out on the 30% tax credit. Now back to the assembly, there is one additional component comes in a separate box and you can see these two rails would extend out quite a bit. So we need something to tie them together. The additional box for this larger ground mount really brings together the two smaller units. It has a splice kit for the top rail and the bottom rail, which I'm installing right now. And then it will have one additional leg where we're able to offset it just slightly because it cannot be secured over that splice kit. But now I can get another concrete block in to make sure we don't have a weak spot between these two, which is actually gonna be my center 400 watt panel. Now moving on to securing and anchoring these to the concrete blocks. This would be the same if you had a concrete pad or if you're securing to sono tubes. You need to check plumb in both directions and just make sure your final tuning of the rack, it can shift one way or another, is completed before you start drilling your holes. Now that golden concrete sleeve anchor comes with kit. I'm actually gonna use Simpson's Strong Tie anchors. I just prefer those, they're much easier to install and easier to remove if you had to. So I just get exactly where I want that, mark it with my Sharpie, move the leg out of the way, drill my hole, and then secure with the Simpson Strong Tie. Now my center panel I'm doing first because I'm gonna center it up right in the middle of the two racks and kind of space it to make sure I don't have any interference with my grass so it's easy to mow and this solar panel will not get hit by the mower. And then the mid clamps here I'm installing now do not tighten these down. You need panels on both sides of the mid clamps to really tighten them down, but I'm just setting them in place. And then I start to line everything up and make sure it's not shifted to one side or the other. So we'll get a third panel and then overall we'll have five total panels with about 14 inches to spare on each side. And then for your reference, my panel dimensions are 41 inches by 76 inches and I was easily able to fit all five. So all in all, it took me about two days of work to get to this point where I have half of my overall system installed. 
and it's gonna be about six more hours. So a total of 22 hours to get four kilowatts of panels installed with the two larger EcoWizzy ground mount systems. For the price, I would say it's hard to beat and I do recommend this for your own project. Let me know your feedback down in the comments. I haven't found a cheaper one on the market and I was overall pretty impressed on how easy it was to install and although it takes a bit to level everything out, it's something most people can do DIY. Now do follow up with your grounding. I have my two eight foot ground rods right beside this rack for my home that I'm gonna tie into, but you might need to do a separate grounding system for your overall rack, depending on where it's located. Now, if you wanna see an even cheaper, more temporary installation, check out this video right here where I use T-Post to mount 400 watt panels. And then if you wanna see what it actually takes to do DIY installation for a grid tied system on your roof, you can check out this video right here and I'll walk you through the complete project I did on my rental property last year. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.